recorded. This meeting is now being recorded. Not sure the two, what the two does. Um, all right, all right, we can uh, we can start here. Um, this is this is Ron Levine at Connective, and I want to welcome everyone and thank you for your participation today. Uh, have two really great speakers from from Future, who are both editor. I think. Oh, Mike, uh, have you? Are you now editor in chief? Because I yes. I, didn't know. <laughs> I apologize on that. No worries. I, I got an old listing there. Two two editor editors in chief, and um, uh, so so we'll get to that in a minute, and uh, and then whoever uh, we'd love to hear from the people who are on after after the presentations to uh just go around a little bit and 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 see how that impacted you. Uh, I do like to uh this is our, our Neil Awards timeline where where in fact a couple people couldn't make it today because they said they were they were en route to the uh judging. So we're we're almost there. So uh finalists will be announced next week. And and then the big luncheon is March 27th. So that's coming up. Um, what do we got here? Okay. Well, um, all right. Before we get to to Cherie and Mike, uh, just wanted to kind of introduce topic. Um, I, I just wanted to give an example of of, of my own uh, my own world. So yesterday, so I I do a, a curate a newsletter for Connective that goes out every day. The daily, and and yes, yesterday I saw a story about intelligence media, and and they're not a member, but apparently they they launched they're a big B two B company, and they launched a pharma unit, so it so it sounded important, so I posted it, and then uh, within 15 minutes, the the president of of intelligence uh, subscribed to the daily. Which is great, and and then uh, I alerted my boss, the CEO here, Jeff, and and then I think Jeff was going to reach out to him, uh, you know, for membership possibilities, and and he thanked me, and I, but but to my thinking, that's that's what I need to do. That's the way it's got to work now. I, I mean, I have to think like that, that 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 to bring in new members. I mean, it's just not not enough anymore for me to to do a good newsletter or write a good story or or that. Uh, I mean, if Jeff, if that if that works and they become a member, that, that's going to be really good for me. Well, and and so um, uh, now I'm lucky that he doesn't uh, he doesn't say prompt me or or you know I'm not hope uh, he's not say forcing me or telling me oh you got to do this or that. But but I think I need to be proactive in that. So, so I just think that that's just an example of of what all of our of all of us editorial people the the thinking we have now is just I was talking with Shuri uh, before we came on just about all the hats we have to wear now and if we're back in college all the new courses I'd be taking on on video and audio and financial and marketing and everything uh, so so it just sets the scene a little um, uh, John uh, are you on John McManus yeah, I, I was having trouble using the link, um, but here I am. How are you, Ron? Okay. Uh, yeah, before we start, I wanted to get uh, some of your thoughts of Hanley Wood on, on how things have changed and how you and others there are, are are dealing with that and all the responsibilities that you have now. Boy, I, I think this, this group has heard a little bit of that, Ron, over the, over the last couple of years, and I there's nothing that hasn't changed um, with respect to the kind of skill sets and um, kind of uh, obligations, responsibilities, and accountability that we are dealing with as uh, editors, as content producers, and experienced producers. Uh, I think uh, the moving target of what our audiences need, uh, what what uh, what that means, and what, why it matters is. is the big force, and then how to kind of use the tools uh, that we have as uh, our, our main skill set around inverted pyramid journalism, and then all the sort of uh, platforms and and uh, you know ways to connect and engage um, are are just changing. And then 
the added element over the last couple of years is really sort of the direct direct role or influence uh, we have around um, being magnets for money, uh, both from the standpoint of advertising and sponsorship and then also in terms of the kinds of uh, lead generation, demand generation, the kind of uh, content marketing aspects that uh, content uh, can can serve as. So it's it's really sort of a, a bunch of moving targets that uh, make it so that it's quite fluid and dynamic right now, and uh, we're energized by it. Uh, but it's uh, we're trying to keep up, keep up, uh, and keep pace with how we try to how we try to be there for our users. Do you find more meetings now, and more with silos down a little bit, or how, how does is there more more of that going on? Um, we have, uh, uh, yeah, we have a proliferation of meetings, um, you know, and so there's a lot of work that gets created in each of them, and so we're trying to kind of um, figure out how to cadence them and, and uh, make them really productive and tr have them serve for several different kinds of uses in terms of how people come out of them and, and know what to do. Um, so yeah, there, there's a lot of conversations that are our new internal partners um, trying to work and figure out the right process um, and try to be productive, uh, uh, kind of in an uh, autonomous way, uh, so that it's not always depending on like uh, uh, huddles for every single thing that gets done. Okay. All right. Thanks, John. Uh, we. Uh, let me introduce Cherie. Um, I, I was very fortunate to come across her a few ago as as the new editor in chief of Laptop Magazine, and uh, and really uh, we we connected at, at first, and then I found out she went to Rutgers where I went, so it made me even double excited and proud. <laughs> um, so um, uh, yeah, Cherie, please uh, please yeah tell us. Uh, about about you do and your challenges and responsibilities. Um, sure. So again, my name is Shreel Smith. I am uh, recently named editor in chief of Laptop Mag. Um, I am. I oversee the day to day operations of the site, um, from everything from what actually goes up on the site to how well it's performing, uh, keeping track of SEO, paying the freelancers, <laughs> um, acting as a brand ambassador, and everything in between. It is my, it is a job that I did not know that I even wanted when I started as a staff writer here uh, nearly a decade ago, well, even more than a decade ago, and it's one of the most rewarding things I've done to date in my life. How 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 much contact do you have with 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 fu with future? Who do you report to? How does that how does that all work? Um. So basically, um, I still report to uh, Mr. Mark Spoonhauer, who has. Um, moved up to global editor in chief, and there's another title that is a director. I, I, might correct me if I'm wrong. Is it editor, editorial director? Like there's yep. two, there's two titles that he is now. Um, yeah, he, it's editorial director. Okay, that he um, is using, and um, he basically oversees all of the Perch brand sites, and that includes uh, Laptop Mag, Tom's Guy, Tom's Hardware, um, and um, Anon Tech. And so basically how we work is um, prior to our promotions, Mike and I worked on both sites, being PG and laptop. And now in our new roles, we are basically focusing on a particular brand. So I am focusing on Laptop Mag and covering, of course, all things laptop, but also uh, tablets and anything that you can connect to a laptop, we're going to cover. Like we have been tasked with um, 
rapidly and aggressively um, expanding into new categories, which is exciting. Um, I still work with Mike um, in Tom's Guide, but it is in a more limited capacity because there are things I still like to write up or write about that I just can't do <laughs> on a laptop. And it like, and I like to be versatile. Like when when I first started at Laptop, when it was still doing a print magazine, you had to be a generalist, and that's it's fun. Like you get to, you never know what you're going to touch every day, and I enjoy that part of the job still to this day. What are some of the success measures you use there? Do uh, um, just clicks or time on site or how, how do you how do you all do that um we operate off of uh, we have a amazing seo team and we also have an amazing e-commerce team so it's a mix of page views it's a mix of like there are all these algorithms to figure out how much money every category is worth and it like i'm still learning it and it's just like every day is a new learning experience like oh wow like if i pull this toggle that does that it, it, it's, it's it very much feels like one of those old school um, cartoon machines like you pull this and you hear the sound effect and if, if it's good you go and if you hear that if it's funky you don't and it's just a constant um it's a it's like steering a ship you're constantly adjusting course to make sure that you're staying on track and heading towards the north star i i'm hoping i'm saying that right mike oh yeah you nailed it Wow, an algorithm for how much a category is worth. That that's mm -hmm. that that wow, that's really inside baseball. That that's so how does that that's presented to you like that? You wanna take it, Mike? Sure. Yeah, like Sheree said, so as far as that more technical stuff, like we do have really great teams around future. Like we have a dedicated SEO team and dedicated e commerce team. So they kind of using tools like Google Analytics, uh, and 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 keyword tool .io and all these different platforms, they can actually, they'll combine all this data together and, and figure out, hey, these are, this is the type of content that gets the most traffic. This is the type of content that makes the most revenue. Um, so we do have a lot, we're, we're lucky to have a lot of insights at our disposal when it comes to that stuff. Wow. And I would add that it helps us shape like the journalism that we want to do because like yes um like best pages are um one of the key drivers of um e-commerce for us but it it also like i like to call it paying the bread and butter gods like you pay the bread and butter gods and you get to do then you get to have your candy and the candy is the journalism like that like doing the deep dives and go and meeting with um with um, product heads and going behind the scenes and about this um, hot new product and, and getting exclusives and doing all that ex all that work that makes being a tech journalist worthwhile like it like the, it's just learning a new aspect of the job when I first started as a staff writer I had no idea all I wanted to do was write and play with play with the toys and now i still want to do that but it's learning about okay well this is this is how you get the most eyes and get the make it make your passion project work for the company as well as satisfy that itch to be a journalist and and um bring that best the latest and greatest news to the public right right All right are all the editorial people now kind of uh, um, uh, uh, normalized or used to, to, to looking at the numbers now before the, on what to cover or, or, or is it a combination now of, of what you think is out there versus what, what's getting clicks or how, how does that work? Hmm. I would on what you, how do you plan? How do you plan, you know, what's, what everybody's going to cover? For for laptop because we're a smaller team than Tom's got, we have to be very strategic. Um, we are a mighty team of four, so for us, the bread and butter is like in addition to best pages, our reviews. We live and we live and die by our reviews, um, by being first, by being best, um, by and. As we expand into new categories, 
we definitely rely on the e-commerce and SEO teams to help us um, find the best way to present the products so we can get that visibility because we're like we're literally a team of four competing with teams of 25 in some cases at other at com competing um publishing houses like even even with our sister sites like we're like one of the smaller teams in the portfolio and but we still like i have an aggressive goal of um publishing 200 reviews a year and i'm hoping and i'm hoping to surpass that if we if we play our cards right and we play strategic if we do strategy and we're also getting um uh, we're also launching video we're also launching more features and behind the scenes so i i just have ambitious plans but i think that our I, i'm pretty sure well actually i know that my team can do it we we're amazing <laughs> and um, uh, looking at the site, where 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 does revenue uh, come from, or do people uh, subscribe, or 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 is it advertising or sponsorships? How how does that work? Mike, do you want me to take it, or you want it? Yeah, you could go ahead. Um, basically, um, we uh, we go. There are no subscriptions, um, but we do e-commerce. So, if you go on any laptop mag or any Tom's Guide site, and you'll see a link, um, a buy link right next to the product, um, which is, it will, it, you'll see it in our reviews. But our best pages are where you'll find that mostly. Um, our best pages are basically summaries of the things that we have reviewed. So if someone is looking for best laptop or best headphones or best um, gaming mouse, um, there's a easy breezy, beautiful way to find it. It's a, um, a page with a summary of everything we thought about the product. We typically don't include anything that's lower than four stars. Um, we have, we rate out of a five star system. So um no, nothing lower than four stars. Um, if it's an editor's choice, even better. Um, and it gives you our pages typically give you the pros, the cons, the pricing, um, and comp and competing prices at that. So we give you Amazon, of course, but we'll also give you Walmart and Best Buy. So you know that you're getting the best deal where no matter what you click. And when you do click, we um, that we do get a small percentage from that sale and that's how a, a decent amount of our money is made but um future has made future success lies in diversification so we don't just rely on e-commerce we have a bustling events team we have a b2b division they like it's such a multifaceted company that it, like it, where other publishing Companies are struggling to figure out how to make SEO work, or at, or even worse, they're at the um, mercy of Google because, as we all know, Google loves to change the algorithms without warning. And one thing, one minute the strategy that was working for you uh, now is working against you, and you have to again frantically write the ship. Thankfully, we don't rely solely on e-commerce to um keep the door keep the lights on and and as uh as the editorial team do, do you get um do, do events do do they come to you sometimes like what's hot or what do, do you do you or marketing do you, is there that kind of interaction um we definitely work um closely like the sales team will sell something and like okay like and i big ups to our sales team for respecting the line between church and state um they do they'll sell something like hey do you have anything or are you working on anything that can work with this campaign like they don't thankfully they don't sell us up the river <laughs> and say hey we've we've sold this right now i need you to write this because i have worked at places that do that and did that a lot <laughs> it it never ended well for any involved Right. Oh, no, that's good. Good. All right. We might have a a, a couple more questions uh, uh, later, but we can uh, we can, we can uh, let Mike uh, have a go here. Sure. Um, so yeah, just to introduce myself, I'm Mike Andronico. I am the 
editor in chief of Tom's Guide. Like Sheree, I just stepped into this role. I was managing editor previously, and I've been part of the Tom's Guide slash laptop team since 2013. Uh, so Sheree and I have definitely seen a lot of changes and acquisitions and you know things evolving over the years. Uh, but kind of like Sheree does for laptop, I, I kind of oversee the day to day for Tom's Guide. Uh, managing our buying guides, making sure all of our evergreen content is staying up to date, making sure we're covering the news we need to be covering, and that you know everyone's just kind of staying on top of their beats and and staying uh, aware of you know the big products and the big announcements coming. Uh, and that's on top of the things that a lot of us do, whether it's you know traveling to major events. I was just in San Francisco yesterday for Samsung's big event, and you know we all make a lot of TV appearances and things like that. So yeah, that's kind of what I do in a nutshell. What, what was your your background before? Did you um, come before from, yeah, from? Yeah, before. Like, are you journal uh, journalism? I'm I'm always. It's wonderful now that it, your people move so so easily into the video or audio podcast and all that. Yeah. So I actually. So yeah, I I went to college for journalism. That was always kind of my focus, my goal. Um, Tom's Guide was actually my first full-time, you know, online media gig. Uh, before that, I was doing a bunch of freelance and also working at uh, an SEO copywriting company, which is funny. It's all kind of come full circle because SEO has become so important for what we do now and just optimizing our content for Google and making sure people can discover it. So it's, you know, it's interesting how this, the skills you pick up in other places uh, become applicable. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um... Yeah, here's uh, this slide. Wow, it talks about a lot of the a lot of the things you do, huh? Yeah. So yeah, how so Tom's guide, kind of in a nutshell, and Sheree touched uh, uh, touched on this a little bit for laptop. You know, we definitely, I would say, our bread and butter is kind of the more SEO friendly buying guide content. So you know, we get a lot of a lot of traffic from things like uh, best smartphones, best TVs. You know, helping people find the best product for their needs. Uh, you know, re and also just the individual reviews, people looking up reviews of the Apple Watch, of the iPhone, of Samsung's new TV, you know, the you know, latest PlayStation Xbox. So that's kind of our our bread and butter. But again, we, we try to be original. We try to, you know, we do a lot. We do a lot of our own testing, as does Laptop. And we try to really weave in as much original reporting as we can. We have a a variety of you know everyone on everyone on Tom's Guide is really an expert on their beat. So you know we have we have a an editor Henry Casey who kind of owns the streaming beat and does a lot of great original stories there while making sure we're you know making sure we have stories on all the latest shows coming up and all the all the big devices like uh, the Fire TV and the Roku and things like that. You know we have a great security editor who stays on top of the big threats and writes breaking news around that. So everyone at Tom's Guide really is the the expert in their beat, and that really shows in the content, not just in kind of the everyday reviews, but a lot of the original reporting and features that we do. How, how do you handle uh, um, editing these days, or or just <laughs> or looking over other people's things? We're, we're all so so busy that uh, <laughs> I'm, man, it's, yeah, I think people just trust trust me here, but but it's, it's right. a lot of responsibility. Unless other people, somebody else it's, looks at it, right? How do, how do you guys do that? Sure, that's a great question. I, I hear Sheree laughing because we both deal with that so much, but just how to find the time for it. I, to me, it varies by the assignment and by the person turning it in. You know, for the most part, when it comes to news stories, especially, the most important thing to me, obviously, I want the copy to be clean and you know, I'll usually give things a quick skim. But for a news story, the most important thing to me is that it has a great headline that people are going to want to click on and read. So you know, we do a lot of headline workshopping. We'll use our Slack to kind of brainstorm ideas. Um, and you know, I obviously we do we do edit the copy, but it's not super meticulous compared to other types of stories because we really want to get the news out. We can always kind of clean up things after, uh, but we want to get things out fast. Where we're a little more meticulous is when it comes to the bigger feature stories. So if someone's turning in, you know, a huge feature, let's say comparing the new Galaxy S20 to the to the iPhone 11. You know, we're, that's going to need a more thorough edit, and you know, we at, we're fortunate to have an, an actual dedicated copy desk that will give you know, they will give stories a thorough, you know, legitimate copy edit to make sure things are as clean and as grammatically correct as possible. So the amount of attention a story gets in terms of editing definitely varies by the type. You know, especially a lot of a lot of us editors, um, for the sake of timeliness, will we'll self-publish 
fairly often when it comes to quick news stories. Um, cause you know, m most, most folks on our staff are pretty clean writers. You know, we know what we're doing. So in the sake of like getting breaking news out, we'll self publish, but we'll also still have people go in and read, you know, go in for a back read and make sure everything's okay. Um, no, it's great to have a, a copy desk still. Um, I, I, I've written before here about headlines. That's that, interesting that, that, you know, I'll write a, I'll write a story, take time, do, do, make it as good as possible. And then in five minutes, oh, I got to get it up. So here's the headline. But, but, but what you're saying is you, you really need to take time. You guys take time with that. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's honestly one of, you know, one thing I, um, I pay especially close attention to um, is you know, trying to craft really good headlines just with the help of the staff. And I really enjoy that brainstorming process. And, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't always take super long. Sometimes it's, you know, we'll just share three ideas and, you know, the staff will pick their favorite and we go from there. But I think it's especially important um, for kind of those, those, you know, feature stories and those personal stories um, you know, we, we actually ran a feature this weekend from a from a freelancer who basically wrote about how the Gal the Galaxy Watch Active kind of almost saved her life. So we we crafted you know a headline kind of around that. So it's about you know not it's about you know coming up with the most engaging headline you can without you know while still being honest and not doing you know what people call clickbait. Like we want to make sure we're not falsely advertising the story, but there definitely needs to be urgency and you know excitement and, and a reason to read the story. Um, is this a typical uh, homepage where you look? Looks yeah. Like? So if you scroll down, um, so yeah, this, so this is our homepage. As you can see, it's similar format to laptops. We're on the same platform. Um, but if you move down a bit, you know, this week, Samsung announced a ton of new phones. So we're, you know, we've been featuring a lot of that on our homepage. But we, we try to curate things to have a good mix of just the latest news in smartphones and security and gaming, things like that. And, also weave in our latest reviews and buying guides. So it's definitely always, it's always about having a good mix. Oh, and where's the, uh, where's the Tom's guide come from, the name? Uh, so yeah, so that's uh, Tom's guide and Tom's hardware way back in the day, I forget the year, uh, were founded by someone named Thomas Pabst, uh, who hasn't been with the company for a long time. Uh, he's just kind of the original founder. And I believe Tom's hardware came first and Tom's guide spawns kind of as an offshoot of that uh, back during previous ownership. This is probably uh, easily over a decade ago. So, yeah, that's kind of a legacy thing that's, you know, from that comes from the person that originally founded the sites. And, you know, we as as a company first as Perch and now as Future kind of inherited that and have just kind of rolled with the names because they become, you know, they've become recognized uh, kind of a bit of a household name in the industry. Um, uh, for for Cherie or, or or Mike, um, I know Future came in recently. Is it made, what was it? Two years ago or how long? Have have, have they? Your, um, your boss. We were we were acquired. Uh, it'll be two years. Um, in sept in September, it'll be two years since we've been acquired by Future. Yeah, yeah, I know a lot of folks. Uh, and Connective have, have, have gone through that. How has those transitions been for that? Um, the tra like, honestly, this, like, starting when I was at Laptop, when Lap for, Laptop was bid for communications, I've been through two um, acquire ships, we'll, we'll call it. Um, the only the only thing that I can say about it is like you have to be ready to roll with the punches because change, there's a lot of change going on and if you're change at first it could be a stressful experience um, for me I've always welcomed change and I've always welcomed the challenge so and I've and luckily here at laptop and by proxy Tom's guide we have a great culture we have like I've been again I've been here for a decade and some change and the things that haven't changed thankfully are the some of the people that I've worked with which is Mark Spoonhauer and Mike Prospero and Avram Pilch and they like they were the ones that like taught me and helped develop me into uh, I guess the leader that I am today and they like 
through their take and their calm nature to embracing the change and their proactiveness it like it, it gave a culture where you could be okay this is this is changing and it's it's a little scary but we're going to get through this and so when we went through this recent one i had just gotten my first staffer and he's like are we going to be okay i'm like we're going to be fine change is constant we're just we're going to roll with it and we're going to do it and we're going to be fine and we're here two years later thriving and is the number of, of women in the field, Cherie, uh, starting to pick up? Um, in, the te in tech, yes. Like, I sit behind behind me is space and life science, and it's an almost all-lady team, and they're all awesome. Um, I would l like to see more ladies in the tech sites, um, but it's it's starting. It's it, like it, it, like I'm seeing more of us, and that's always a good sign. Oh, uh, yeah, that's great. Um, I, I, I'd like to open it up um, um, to everyone here. Are there are there any any questions or, or comments about about what you've heard or how how things are going with your in your shop? Hi, this is Greg Fries from LexPol, and I have a question for Cherie. First, I guess the two questions. One would be, you know, I've been skimming a few of your articles. It looks like you try to inject some personality, some of yourself, into reviews, and I wonder how important that is to engaging readers or even increasing the commissions that those articles generate. And then also, second, just have you seen trends in how the affiliate commissions have changed over time, or is it really just traffic, more views, more clicks, more commissions? Well, for the first one, for the second question, I would say it's the latter of the two. It's like volume is king. Um, the more clicks, the more page views, like it, it translates into more revenue, um, especially. Um, um, Michael agree we during Amazon Prime Day and what we call peak trading which is uh, the Black Friday to what when did Green Monday become a thing I'm still trying to figure that out Green Monday is this new phenomenon to me that we're also working through uh, after Cyber Monday I don't know what it is but apparently a lot of people are shopping on this Green Monday <laughs> so we are there um, when for those periods we basically are all hands on deck um it's 24 hours we take shifts and we're um around the clock writing the best deals and like making sure that people can find them and it, and it really um bolsters our bottom line at the end of the fiscal year um and for the first question i I, I've always written that way. I I need to put a little bit of me into it. Um, for me, when I'm writing, especially for Laptop Mag, I like to think that I'm writing for my mother and my grandmother. And, and if the easier it is to read, the easier it is for them to understand the less tech support that I have to do. Um, it hasn't worked yet. I still have to do tech support every single time I go home, but that is the overarching goal of um, the copy. But it, I think that putting a little bit of personality into your copy helps in the long run. Who wants to read a boring uh, review? Like you can, you can do that on Amazon. You can just oh well, here's the specs, and here like this is what it's supposed to do. Like you, people want to know how how the lived in experience is like tech in a lot of ways it, as far as tech reviewing is an aspirational thing because yes we like laptop and tom sky we definitely do a lot of testing but a lot of people don't understand what geek bench is or what 3d mark does like what they do understand is, hey, I did all this multitasking. I and the machine was still chugging along, and I didn't I didn't experience any slowdown. It didn't it didn't get hot when I put it on my lap, oh, or like when I played a game, it didn't stutter. Those are things that people understand 
rather than okay, well, it it transcoded this in two minutes. What does that mean to anybody but um, people that are well versed in the industry? I would never guess you put all personality into your column from that <laughs> picture we're seeing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Greg, do you, Greg, do you find uh, do you, your writers use it with injecting personality, or do you do it, or how do you find that? Uh, so I think yes. The you know sometimes I have to um, I guess takes I more often than not, I think we're trying to remove some of the personality that. Um, Depending on the topic, a conversational tone may or may not work. Or, um, you know, our writers aren't trained journalists. They're cops or firefighters or paramedics. And some of their regionalisms or things that might be appropriate uh, for the fire station might not work in an article for the world to see. Uh, and I guess it's even questionable whether they're appropriate for the fire station. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, so that I think sometimes is the, you know, the balance we're trying to make is to, you know, help our writers realize that we're giving them a really big platform. And as such, they might have to be a bit more formal than they think. That can be a tough call these days. Yeah, sometimes it's really easy. It's sort of like, oh, there's no way we're printing that. Uh, thanks, but no thanks. And then, you know, I think I said on a previous call, the complaint we get the most is, you know, you're taking away my voice and, uh, you know, changing the way I would want people to hear me. Uh, and... You know, that's then tough to follow up with if somebody would say, well, you sound like a dope when you write that way. Um, they don't want that feedback. Mike, how, how about on your side uh, uh, with, with that? Do you, have, do you kind of give your writers a, a lot of leeway? Uh, in terms of what they can write about or how they go about it? I think, it, um, yeah, with their voice and, and I, I how they yeah, that. I yeah I, I actively encourage writers to not only write in their own voice, but you know write about the things that they're passionate about. As long as it's kind of within our wheelhouse and, and has potential. Um, in fact, I kind of have a bit of a, a reputation for if I just hear if I overhear someone talking about like you know something that happened with tech in their personal life, I'll I'll say like oh that sounds like a story you should write it up. Um, yeah, it is very know. much a, a he or she who smelt it dealt it type of deal over here. Yeah, it's like, oh, it sounds like you just volunteered yourself. Um, but no, I, I do actively encourage our writers to to write about, you know, the way tech impacts their personal lives and, and, and definitely write in their own style, their own voice. Uh, again, our editor, Henry, recently did a great piece about, you know, getting the Apple Watch for the first time and his first few months with it, how that kind of changed his life and his fitness routine and all that. Uh, and there's, there's so many other great examples of that where it's, you know, we're, we're, we're writing about the the products and the you know the products and the topics we normally cover, but from a much more personal angle, which I think people connect with, um, because you know I, I really like I really like when we're able to just write like everyday people, and as Sheree says, like write things that your mom can relate to, your grandmother can relate to. So I, I always actively encourage that type of content. You know, I, I try to make sure we actually have a steady flow of it. In fact, because I, I think it's one of those things that makes us stand out. Because you know all of our competitors uh, are doing a great job with the just the, the bread and butter, you know, having having good SEO, having all the buying guides for all the hot products. But I feel like what's what really makes an outlet stand out, uh, especially now in 2020, is you know having being able to establish all of your writers as distinct voices and people that readers will want to come back to to read whatever they write. Uh, that's that's kind of you know one of my one of my big focuses and goals is kind of you know put make sure that all of our writers kind of become an established voice uh, and and become people that. Folks want to keep coming back to you to, to read their latest stuff. Right. No, yeah. No. I, and I've written about uh, now pushing writers more to uh, uh, say speak at events or, or 
be a personality like you're saying. I've mm-hmm. often said I, I, I wish I was pushed more when I was younger because I think I would have enjoyed it, but, but uh, it kind of wasn't happening back then. Yeah, and, and to that point, you know, we also, I don't know if we've spoken this before, but you know, we've also been, we also do a fair amount of video content. We've been you know, pushing, pushing that more, especially the past year or so. And I think it is really important to kind of put a face in the, and a voice to the content that people are reading. So you know, anytime we do a major review for for a phone or a TV or or, or a streaming products, like you know, we we really try to make sure there's a great video to accompany it, so you could kind of hear the author talk, you know, talking more in depth about what they've covered, and you know, just letting the readers kind of see the writer's personality a little bit more. Uh, that's a great point with video. Um, are, are there any other questions uh, or comments? Hi, this is um, Rebecca. I just have a question for Cherie. This is really great talk. Um, I also have a small publishing team and I oversee a small association magazine and I'm also wearing a lot of hats. I'm doing multimedia now. We're doing more web content and also promoting the content on social media. And you also have a small team. How do you um, manage a lot of these competing demands? Uh, it is a work in progress. Um, time management is definitely something that I am always um, trying to grapple because there are never enough hours in the day. One of my uh, staff writers is giving me the, the uh, evil eye now because I owe him some blurbs. Um, and I'm willfully ignoring him. Um, it, it, it like some it, like some days you just have to like work from home and like just okay these are the things that I need to get done that I can't get done here because then you're sometimes when you're in the office there's a fire every every 10 to 20 minutes that you have to put out and it's easy to get distracted and wrapped up in the administrative and lose track of the thing that you that one goal that you had to do for the day or you wanted to do for the day um so I try to schedule out my day and and become like Mike is an expert at this Mike is the note taking king he has notes everywhere and he's so organized and I, I'm like god how does he do like how is he so I'm trying to adopt a little bit of uh Andronicoism <laughs> <laughs> if I don't put something in a google doc I, I'll forget it that's the only reason why I do it yeah because I <laughs> I, it's the same because when I was younger, it was like no, I got my memory is like yeah, this and this and then no, we're boom, yeah. boom. and now it's like no though, and there like there's twenty there's twenty things on this list that I want to get done today, and I like if I don't, I'm finding if I don't write it down or if I don't have notes to keep me um, honest that some things will fall through the cracks and like it's okay sometimes, but it can't be it can't be an all the time thing like it, it, it so some days like are slotted out for me for admin stuff other days are slotted out for writing then um something that future has instituted that i think is amazing is um one to ones where we meet with our staffers at least uh once a month or bi-weekly um, one, like one on one with your staffer, like to go over um, goals for the year and objectives, and just talk about and just you know keep the air clean. Like, are are you worried about something? Is there a problem? How can I help you? How like because in my, in my mind, my job for them is to help them get to the next level, whatever that whatever they deem next level to be. So at the beginning of the year, we I spoke with all of my staffers and asked them what they what their goal was and I'm like okay so this is what we're going to be working on here the milestones that we have to reach to get you there and it's so it's a constant work in progress so every month or every two weeks I, I sit down with each of them and we talk and we we plot like okay here's where you were here's where you are and here's where we're going <laughs> um Rebecca mentioned social media. Is, is that is that something uh, each writer is responsible for, or is there a separate person for that, or how does that work? 
thankfully there is a we do have social media people that are the stewards of our instagram and our twitters and our facebooks and our tiktoks and like they they take the things that may seem mundane and make them viral and they like they're ama amazing at their job um i do recommend that people um they should also be the shepherds of their own social media like if you do, like if i do a great story i definitely will be on social media crowing about it or any of my staff members um and it, but like thankfully that's not all that's not also on my plate like we have like great social media people that take care of that and like they do like they've been proactive and stay, seeing the story within the story like okay you reviewed this laptop which okay that's great but how do i make this viral how do i make this even more interesting that's a good setup that, that's nice to have that Uh, okay. Anyone else, a uh, uh, comment or a question? Um, all right, well, I, um, I don't know. We've been pretty thorough, I think. Um, if I look at my list, if I have anything else. Uh, oh. John, did you have anything? No, I've been fascinated to listen. I, I, I think maybe I just would be curious uh, about, you know, the experience people are having with respect to uh, evidence and evidence and how it's uh, supported with data and facts and how challenged uh, uh, some of our disciplines around evidence is. Uh, you know, where it's debatable and where facts are debatable and how that becomes an additional kind of, uh, you know, challenge for us. It's, it's, it sort of fits into some of the scoping of what we've been talking about, but it might be another topic for another day, too. Um, I, I personally, like, fake news is the worst thing that could have happened to our industry. Like, in, in less than four years, our, our, industry as a whole has taken a blow and we we uh, journalists are supposed to be truth tellers and when pe when the public's opinion of us has been tarnished so badly that they that if we are we we're telling them the truth and we're being labeled as fake news it's detrimental um it's detrimental to our way of life to our society it's detrimental to the people that are um task with being those truth tellers um and it's something in the coming years that we're going to have to double down against and really uh fight back against because no one i don't think anyone becomes a journalist to become famous i know i didn't i i just wanted to report and tell and tell the news and and bring it as accurately as possible so i it, I, I really do think that we we kind of are under attack and we need to come up with concerted efforts to stem the tide of the, um, this erroneous label. Oh, thanks. That's a, that's a good answer. Um, is, is there, I was just curious, is there any, any print? That you do anymore, or is it all did all digital video everything? Unfortunately, we have gone all digital, but Future owns over a hundred publications, and a lot of them are still print. Um, print is doing super well across the pond. Um, it'd be nice. It'd be nice to bring it back to print, but I don't like the pace that we're moving now with online, I don't know if that'd be possible. Like we'd have to have much larger teams to do that. Right. Oh, it's interesting that uh, across the pond, right? That it's still popular. Huh. Um, all right. Well, if, if there's uh, 
if one one more one more shot if anybody has anything. Okay, well, I don't think anyone ever complained about uh, us finishing a couple minutes early. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. I, I really want to thank you, you Mike and Sheree. This was, uh, as John said, it, it was it was good stuff. It's things we all deal with every day. So uh, I think we're going to get a lot of views when we post post it. Um, and um, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say thank you for having us. It w it definitely was a pleasure for me. Like I always love talking journalism, and like the evolution of the of our industry like when i came out of school it it, it looks nothing the way, it looks nothing like the way I, when it did when i came out of school mm -hmm. and that's a great thing it, it we're growing with the times and i'm just excited to see what the next 20 years is going to bring oh wow i'm worried about tomorrow okay <laughs> i'm i'm uh, an optimist at heart <laughs> <laughs> no that's good Oh, you're right. It's 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 amazing. Um, all right, all right. Well, to um, to everyone on the call, I, I think uh, uh, you'll see a you'll see a survey. So uh, I, maybe on on topics and and on perhaps what what the best time is for people. But um, but but this was really good. So so thanks and and uh, we'll be in touch. And take care. Right, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Bye, guys. Marie, Mike, and Ron. Thank you. Of course. Take care. Bye. Bye.